Hello, everybody. This is Alan Fine, and I'm here with Brad Tolkien, who is the CEO of World Travel Holdings, which we know has about 40 companies in, under it. It's got a lot of brands. But we're not starting the interview yet, but okay. <laughs> and we, including Dream Vacation, Cruise One, and Cruises Inc., which we've been reporting is going to be folded into the previous group of uh, companies, correct? Correct. But what we're really going to talk about is National Conference, which we are here on Celebrity Apex, and we've just had a, an address. Brad addressed the membership, and he talked about his vision of the future, and that's what we're going to talk about here on Insider Travel Report. Brad, thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Welcome to the Celebrity Apex. Thank you. And, and to your, your unbelievable suite. This is the, uh, which one? The iconic suite, which is just magnificent. Unfortunately, I worked for uh, all seven days. I didn't get off the ship. Was in meetings most of the time, and actually this is my first meeting in the suite, and I suggested uh, to our organization that we use the suite to have this interview because okay. it would be great for the travel advisors to see this amazing accommodation. You and I talked in the middle of the, the pandemic. We were deep in it. We were by, talking by Zoom. And at the point where most people were really like, oh, when is this going to end? You were optimistic then. Now, you seem over the top. So basically what I want to talk about in this interview is why. Well, the pandemic shut us down. In, uh, and I'm not talking about the cruise industry. I'm, I'm really talking about... Um, us as families we didn't go anywhere I, I remember last March April May we were all in the same position and every meal was at home we hardly ventured outside and we were in a completely different world and in the history of our country including if you read about the Civil War and the World War One and World War two and, and subsequent wars never before in our history have we been shut down the way we were shut down in 2020. And that shutdown continued in many respects. It still continues to this day. There are still limitations on where we can go and if we're vaccinated, not vaccinated, should we wear a mask, not wear a mask. And so the people are just, they, they are can't wait to get out. They can't wait to travel. But on top of that, Alan, there's a confluence of positive events that are gonna fuel travel for the next 30 months. And then, as I shared with everyone this morning, there's one particular thing, positive thing, that has come out of this pandemic that just never could have been predicted if we didn't have this pandemic, or certainly I did not predict it, and certainly it would not be happening at this moment in time in our history. And so I think that is the exactly. most important point to get across to travel advisors and anyone in the leisure travel industry. Well, let's work our way there because the, the pent up demand everyone's talking about, and I was interested in how you went beyond that. So that's really what we're, what we're doing. Let's talk about World Travel Holdings. One of the things you said that uh, it did was it, it, it put people ahead of everything. And so I wanted to understand, I mean, I know your members were very happy about uh, the support they got from the organization. Let's talk a little bit about the PPPs, because on one hand, your organization was so large that it couldn't have it. But on the other hand, you were helping everyone else get it. Yep. So um, the demarcation line for the PPP grant, which is a grant that did not have to be paid back. And, um, you know, there are a lot of wonderful aspects of the uh, PPP grant that the uh, government of the United States did for all companies, not only in the travel business. Um, but they had a demarcation line, and, and, and that was 500 employees. And if you- You have how many? Well, at the time the pandemic hit, we had um, worldwide over 1,400 employees, um, but we never came close to getting below the 500 employee um, mark. And so we did not qualify for the PPP. And just using a company outside uh, of the travel industry that eventually returned the money. The Los Angeles Lakers, who had much less than 500 employees, were making money. They took the grant because there was no requirement if you were making money or not. They subsequently, because of consumer pressure, returned the money and did the right thing. But there were many companies like that. I would hate to be a company with 501 employees and they fire that person in order to... Exactly. So, um, 
our organization, especially our senior leadership team, they prevailed uh, to Jeff and me, don't try and get below the 500. Our people are our secret sauce. They are our weapon. And so um, in spite of the difficulty of not getting there and not accepting the grant money, which was millions and millions of dollars for many of our competitors, um, we didn't go there. And we kept our people, we kept a, a lot of our people, and it did help us in the early stages. And when we talk to the cruise lines back now, I'm talking about in the spring of 2020 and the summer of 2020, they did inform us that we were doing on a relative basis in terms of handling the FCCs and processing them, uh, we were ahead of the pack um, in terms of the travel distribution system. And in terms of um, our franchisees and our independent members, uh, we did a couple of things. One, we aligned ourselves with our bank because a lot of them did not have banking relationships and you needed a banking relationship to process the PPP loan. And so what we did is we went to our bank, City National Bank of Florida, and we asked them, can you help our franchisees, our customers process the PPP loan? And they stepped to the plate and said, yes, we will help. That was a big deal for your membership. It, it was, and um, it was of great assistance. And then the next thing that we did is, um, uh, in, er, in the early part, we announced that late last year, in the early part of 2021, um, we you know, knew that everything was going to return and we're sitting here on a ship today, but we still had to provide a bridge for many of our franchisees and WTH put a million dollars of its own money, made it available to our franchisees. Many of them took us up on it, some didn't, and, um, and, and we made those loans. We made the loans. Yeah, no, that was important. I wanted to make sure everybody heard about that. Um, the support you gave was tremendous also in train, terms of training. And, um, and But then I want to talk now about your address today. You made a statement that was really interesting. I, I know that the FCC's, the future cruise credits, were such a burden, you know, booking and unbooking. But you had a new take on that today. Yes. I, you know, I, I was um, talking about a story that happened in my past in the travel industry. Uh, where you know you you seize upon a challenge and turn it into an opportunity and and certainly the FCCs have been a challenge to process for the individual travel advisor and and I get it but I also want to take a moment before I address that opportunity to let's sit back and recognize what the cruise lines have done because they're the only industry as an industry that really stepped to the plate and said we are going to pay you a commission on a canceled trip, which was due to no fault of theirs, mm -hmm. okay, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to convince that customer to keep the money with us, we're going to give you an FCC. Many of them supersized that FCC by 25%. Yes, and we are going to pay you commission a second time. And so let's start with that fact, which is just amazing in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, Let's remember back in March of 2020, the cruise industry came to a complete halt. And all of, most of the employees of the cruise industry worked from a corporate office. So at the same time, they had to cancel sailings, issue these FCCs, come out with policies. They had to send all of their employees home to unsecured networks. How are we going to distribute these telephones to all of these the telephone calls to all of these people now who all of a sudden are working from home? And on top of that, they had their own significant financial challenges. They had to go to the debt markets, the equity markets, and they still, just this week, Norwegian again went to Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings went to the equity markets. So my take first is we need to give the cruise lines a hall pass here. But what I really want, wanted to say, what I did say in terms of the FCCs, if I had told you back in 2019 that if you have a canceled booking, I'm going to pay you your full commission on the canceled booking. If you keep that money on another booking, I'm going to pay you the commission again. And what you have to do is you have to bear with us and, hold, and, and be on hold for two hours while we help you process this. I am telling you a lot of you would have come to me and said, Brad, send me all the FCCs because that's a guaranteed additional commission. And so 
the point was don't look at the FCCs as a challenge. Look at it as an opportunity to earn more money and an opportunity to engage with your customer again. And th that was really the point. That was a good point. Uh, the other thing I found interesting, I mean, we're all now trying to teach the consumer how safe it is. And you put up a slide about um, the health and safety positivity rate being 0.03%. Let's yes. talk about what that really means. Well, it means that there's hardly a virus aboard a cruise ship. And, and uh, that 0.03% came from the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line's last um, public earnings call um, where they disclosed this is what has been their positivity rate. Actually, the CDC reported that the overall cruise industry positivity rate was slightly lower than that, okay, which is just amazing. And whenever I meet with a group of people, whether it be people in the travel industry or, also, or just friends of mine who have this perception about cruising, I say to them, go to your local grocery store tonight at three, today at 3 p.m. If they lock the doors and test everyone, the positivity rate will be a multiple of what we are experiencing on a cruise ship. The cruise industry has just done a magnificent job, and 0.03% is nothing. That your point you made was uh, it, the only safer place might be a hospital, and I'm not even sure of that. Exactly. I, 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 it's because of all the protocols in place. And these protocols are not restricting the cruise experience. As soon as we boarded the beautiful new Celebrity Apex this week, we were met by people after we got out of the terminal, and they said the first words, take your mask off now if you want. And we have been on board this ship for seven days now, I would say that 99% of the passengers walk around without a mask. Occasionally you see a mask if people are indoors. Everyone's accepting of that, okay? Um, the staff is wearing masks when they're indoors, but even celebrity, and I, I hear the other cruise lines, when staff are working outdoors, they allow the staff to take off the mask. So this is just a great experience. This is a pre-pandemic experience, but over and above the safety, over and above the safety, and I've traveled a great deal since the spring in many hotels around the world, is that the experience is at pre-pandemic or better levels. Every dining room option is open, room service, I got my shoes shined, all the entertainment options are open, housekeeping multiple times a day, not that I gotta leave my wastebasket outside the door, ask for towels, have no help with my luggage. This is just an unbelievable experience because of all the protocols they have put in place. So we talked about this pent up demand, everyone expected it, but you saw, you see it as even larger a great opportunity has occurred. So, yes, I, I'll break out the return of leisure travel into two buckets. The next 30 months, which are going to be fueled by the confluence of positive macro events, uh, savings rate at a 20-year high, um, the pent-up demand because people have been locked down, and, and other positive factors. But then there's the long term impact or the long term change that has come out of the pandemic. And what the pandemic did is it taught us that we could work from anywhere. And this is a permanent change. And I am not saying that people will not return to offices. There will be office work. But I can't, I have not heard of one company that is say, no, you have to come back five days a week, 50 weeks of the year, two weeks vacation, etc. People are changing where they work from, and that is a permanent change. That genie is never going back into the bottle. And you know, I had my own personal experience this week where um, one of my sons was able to move from one location to another location for his career. Heretofore, he, w he could not do that because his wife had to go to an office, but his wife's company, his wife works full time, is allowing her to work full-time remotely and he can make this geographical change for his work but in addition to that there are many companies now that I, I've heard are implementing policies like April anywhere and August anywhere and what's that saying is during these months April and August you can work anywhere and so my overall point Alan is something that we call vacation days 
and vacation days have been greatly expanded because of the pandemic, because of it taught us we could work efficiently, effectively, and profitably for, for our companies, not only from an office. And there are just many benefits beyond vacation days uh, to that, but for the leisure travel industry specifically, that is a home run. Vacation days have multiplied. U.S. is notoriously uh, not using their vacation days. Now they're going to start to. Well, I, I think one is they'll start to because um, people can work from anywhere. But another thing the pandemic has taught us, and uh, Elena from Princess Hotels called it a life diet, but people don't want to put things off now. Okay? We were shut down. And so one thing that has also come out of the pandemic is let's do what we want to do now. And one of the things that every American wants to do is travel. And so they're not going to put off that travel. So yes, uh, I think you were intimating that many other countries take longer holidays than we do in the United States, and that's true. And so I think the United States is going to catch up with that philosophy. And on top of that, you have the ability now to, or the acceptance by employers for people to work remotely and again, it's not going to be 100%. The pendulum's not going where we're never going to an office again. But if your spouse has a vacation time, you no longer have to coordinate my vacation time with their vacation time. So you could take advantage of their vacation time, work during the day or whatever your hours are, and then spend time with your family in a beautiful location, whether it be on a cruise ship or on a resort. Um, and, and it's just amazing. The, this is a phenomena that is permanent. Now you concluded with a prediction for that we would see something on in uh, January of 23. So, uh, I predict that when we wake up on January 1st, 2023, so 13 and a half months from now, and when people read headlines, whether it be online or in a paper, um, it's going to say that the number one industry to have been in in 2022 is leisure travel. And isn't it great that we're on it? It is. It's phenomenal. I, I just say to myself, I'm pinching myself that I'm so lucky to be in this industry. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Alan. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.